అందరికీ నమస్కారములు టుడే ఈజ్ ద సెకండ్ డే ఆఫ్ అవర్ కోర్స్ ఆన్ అడ్వాన్స్ లెవెల్ టూ ఆఫ్ సర్టిఫికేట్ కోర్స్ ఆన్ సనాతన ధర్మ సో వీ విల్ స్టార్ట్ విత్ ద టాపిక్ ఆన్ ఇంట్రొడక్షన్ టు వేదాస్ బై డాక్టర్ సిఎస్ఆర్ ప్రభు గారు and today's topic will be a new concept introduction to a new concept by him so it will be very interesting let us uh, uh, start the session with uh, reciting vande mataram by challa chitti babu garu and then prarthana so you don't have to get up please keep sitting and uh, recite వందే మాత్రం అలాంగ్ విత్ చల్లా చిట్టి బాబు గారు గో హెడ్ ఓ యూ హ్యావ్ టు ఎస్ వందే మాతరం వందే మాతరం సుజల సుఫల మలయజశీతలాతరం వందే మాతరం శుభ్రజ్యోత్స్నాపులకితయామిని పుల్లకుసుమితృమదళశోభిని సుహాసిని సుమధురభాషిణి సుఖదాంవరదాతరం వందే మాతరం వందే మాతరం వందే మాతరం ధన్యవాదములండి చల్లా చిట్టిబాబు గారు నావ్ లెట్ ఇస్ రిక్వెస్ట్ అనంతం జీ హరి ఓం సర్వేభ్య నమస్కార ప్రథమత ఏక నిమిషం ధ్యానం వన్ మినిట్ మెడిటేషన్ లెట్ అస్ సిట్ అరాక్ట్ సమం కాయ శిరోగ్రీవ కాన్సన్ట్రేషన్ ఆన్ బ్రెత్ relax yourself mind goes elsewhere please bring back and concentrate on breath trivaram omkaram o పతి గుం హవామహే కవిం కవీనా ముపమశ్రవస్తమం జరాజం బ్రహ్మణాం బ్రహ్మణస్పత ఆన శృణ్వన్నోతి విసీదసాదనం మహాగణపతయే నమ ప్రణో దేవి సరస్వతే వాజేర్వాజినీవతి వాగ్దేవ్యై నమ 
குருவகத்தர் குருமேவஜ குரு சஹாஸ்மி நமோ குரவே நகுரோ பரமம் சிசுரஸ்மி குரோ மதிரஸ்தி குரோ மம பாஹி குரோ ஜானந்தமயந்தேவம் நிர்மலஸ்பிகாதி ஆதாரம் சர்வித்தியமுமே ஸ்ருதிஸ்மலம் கருணாலயம் நமாவத்பாதம் லோக்கரம் சங்கரம் சங்கராச்சாரியம் கேசவம் வாதராயணம் சூத்திரபாஷ்யவ் வந்தே பகவந்தௌ புனஹ் புனஹ ஈஸ்வரோ குருராத்மேதி மூர்த்தி பேத விபாகினே லோமவத்வியாப்தேஹாய தட்சிணாமூர்த்தையே நம சனாவது சனௌனக்கு சக வீரியங்கரவாவகை தேஜஸ்வினாவதீத்தமஸ்து மாவிஷாவகை ஓஷாந்தாந்தி அரிஹி ஓம் ஸ்ரீ குருபியோ நம அரிஹி ஓம் தன்யவாதமுலாண்டி அன்னந்தன கார நாவ் லெட் இஸ் ரிக்வெஸ்ட் பிரபு காரு டு ஸ்டார்ட் த செஷன் ஐ திங்க் பிரபு காரு இஸ் லிட்டில் எவே யா ஹி ஹஸ் கம் பேக் friends today we will delve into the vedas the concept of devatas the concept of adi bhautika adi devika adhyatmika levels of knowledge and the devatas i have already sent you one document i hope all of you have studied it carefully some of them some of you have already asked some questions on the whatsapp i am very happy i will answer those questions in this lecture today so i presented this uh, approach in a top international conference on rigveda held at tiruvannamalai by one satya sahara you know uh, ashram there something uh, sometime uh, 15 years ago they asked me to <coughs> bring an original approach so normally uh, when we talk of the vedas uh, it is very famous statement that yo vedadau swara prokto vedante cha pratishthitah tasya prakriti linasya tasya maheshwara so the lord the maheshwara is 
expressed in the swaras of the vedas is established in the spiritual philosophy of the upanishads yo vedado swara prokto vedante cha pratishthitah vedanta is the spiritual philosophy of the upanishads it is called vedanta because the upanishads are the fourth part of the veda samhita brahmana aranyaka and upanishad whereas the veda proper is samhita that is why it is said vedado swara prokto the supreme reality is expressed in the vedic swaras that means the chanting i am sure you all heard of the chanting every day you must be hearing the people who chant will not give you any explanations in fact they may not know 90% of them they do not know the meaning only 10% or less would have studied the vedartha and upaluri ganpati shastri garu was one such uh, luminary top luminary and my connection with him is very strange he studied vedas from my great grandfather in kollur village next to tenali and he is the top most he was rather he is no more yesterday was his vardhanti uh, and all the vedic pandits came and chanted the vedas i will send the recordings to you later so the all the temples will have one vedic pandit and that is because of upalur ganpati shastri garu who established this scheme of ttd to appoint one vedic pandit in every temple so you know in any temple any puja or any ritual will contain the vedic mantras not only the temple pujas but also the chodas samskaras the marriage all the rituals they will all contain vedic mantras without the vedic mantra without the vedic mantra there is no hindu ritual whether it is a puja or whether it is a samskara or whether it is a yagam or yajnam whether it is smarta karma we know that the karma is of three types shrauta karma smarta karma and pauranik karma now shrauta karma means all the yajnas and yagas there are eleven havir yagas today also there is one soma yagam going on at pragati resorts for 10 days since yesterday i could not go because of our programs and one day i would like to go those who are in hyderabad can visit pragati resorts during this 10 days and enjoy the witnessing of the soma yagam so there are 11 havir yagas starting with agnihotram which we do every day i also do every day agnihotra homam then vaishvadevam then next 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 like the atiratram and then soma yagam and then so on till chayanam so a person who performs soma yagam is not is given a title as soma yaji and a person who performed chayanam is called chayan chayan lugaru soma yaji lugaru chayan lugaru so all these yajnas and yagas avir yagas including ashvamedham vajapeyam they are all there and they are there throughout the globe of course today outside india there is no shrauta karma being practiced largely but originally the whole world was sanatan dharma yesterday i demonstrated to you how there are enough evidences that all countries were having sanatan dharma at one point of time in europe the people called druids they were performing the homas and yajnas and yagas and so avan they called in hindi so today the hindu diaspora which is spread in every country in the world is re- trying to revive these activities by constructing temples and our uh, deepak singhal ji just went to ireland iceland and all the countries and came back where they are trying to revive 
the Hindu culture. So if you perform the Vedic rituals in America, Australia, Canada, UK, you are not doing anything wrong. You are only reviving what was lost thousands of years ago by the Abrahamic religions coming and stopping and converting and destroying everything. So now we have to revive the global Hinduism, which was there previously. I would rather say global Garvapasi, not just Garvapasi within India, but global Garvapasi. So for that, all these Srauta Karmas are essential. And one important point to note is the Srauta Karma is not meant for a single individual. Except the Ajamani who is sitting, who is a Somayaji or whatever he is. But it is not for himself this is being performed. All the Sraudha Karmas, even Agnihotra onwards, they are not performed for the benefit of the individual to get a job or to get money or to get a child or for any such purpose. They are not Kamya Karmas. They are meant for the society. They are meant for the Loka Kalyana. So, this, through this Rauta Karma, it is possible to bring world peace, welfare, and good rains, good environmental balance, etc. I'll explain this more detail a little later. And then this Mahatta Karma, which is performed by the Brahmin Purohits who have studied Smartam only, not Srautam, is comprising of uh, various uh, religious uh, yagas and like Chandi Yagam or Chandi Homam or Rudra Yagam, Rudra Homam, and Maharakshmi Yagam or any other Devata Upasana, like uh, even the uh, Navagraha Homams. Today I'm going to go to a temple where Bhutagraha Homam will be done only for me. So the Smarta Karmas are meant for the individuals. And they will also help others, but they are not primarily aimed at the environmental purification or the, they are aimed at the individual purification, individual elevation, individual progress and benefit. And the Pauranic Karma is one which has no Agniyotra. So it is performed like Sachdarayan Vratham, Paralakshmi Vratham. It can be performed by all communities, including females, etc., 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 because there is no Agniyotra. And so the three types of karma, Srauta, Smarta, Pauranic karma, has been prevailing for thousands and thousands of years, but they're all based on the Vedic chant. So now the people who chant the Vedas, they do not understand the meaning because they have not studied the Vedangas. So unless and until you study the Vedangas, the Vyakaranam, Niruktam, Chandas, Jyotish, Kalpa, Shiksha, Kalpa, Vyakarana, Nirukta, Chanda, Jyot. Shiksha is basic pronunciation and other things. Kalpa is the procedures of the rituals, steps. And Vyakarana, Mukham Vyakarana, the great Shastra giving the correct way of speaking, correct way of reading, correct way of understanding, interpreting or writing everything. I will be covering one session on the Vyakrana Vedangam later. And Niruktam is also there, which is the etymology or the thesaurus of the Vedic Sanskrit. By the way, Vedic Sanskrit language is not the same as ordinary Sanskrit. It is the parent of the ordinary Sanskrit. Ordinary Sanskrit is like Hindi for the Vedic Sanskrit. At the time of Valmiki, the language which was used by the common people, that was the language in which Valmiki wrote Ramayana and Lava and Kusha sang those Ramayana shlokas as songs on the streets and Chaurastas of Ayodhya city. So that the common people can also understand. Therefore, Valmiki became the Adhikavi of that language. A lot of people think uh, Valmiki is Adhika way of Sanskrit. So which Sanskrit? Which language? Not the Vedas, because Vedas existed long back before the Valmiki was born. So Valmiki is Adhikavi only for the classical Sanskrit or 
recent Sanskrit, which was like Hindi at the time of Valmiki or the time of Brahma. So the Veda existed far before that, and even in the previous Manvantaram, previous Kalpam, and so on. So in fact, it is said that in the, when the creation came out, Vedas were already there. The vibrations of Vedas were already there. Now, the classification of karma, we have talked about Shrauta, Smarta, and uh, Auranika. Apart from that, we have Nitya, Naimitika, Kamya karmas. So, Nitya karma is Sanyavandaram, Agniyotram, basic things. And Naimitika is particular purpose, like uh, Upanayanam or uh, Primantam or Vaivaham or any purpose. It could be samskaras or it could be any other like Ayushya Homam or Ugra Ratha Shanti, which is Shashti Purti or Bhima Ratha Shanti, which is the Saptati Purti. And I will be performing my own Bhima Ratha Shanti towards the third week of July. I have entered the 70th to 80th decade in my life. So all these are Naimittika karmas and Kamya karmas are meant for a particular desired fulfillment. Like I want a child, Putra Kameshti, or I want to become the emperor, Aswamedham, or I want to uh, pass uh, exams, PhD I want to complete. Then I will perform Saraswati Upasana with a specific goal. By the way, they all work. The top secret I want to tell all of you is that all these karmas do work. They produce results. If they don't produce results, nobody will perform. And the fact that they are being performed for many thousands of years is itself a proof that it works. All these things work. Of course, uh, we have other types of karma division given in the Bhagavad Gita. That is Nishkama karma how to perform karma without. In fact, in the Bhagavad Gita, second chapter onwards, Raigunja Vishaya Veda Nistraigunyo Bhavadjana Nirguno Nitya Satvasto Niryo Gakshema Atmavan. He made it very clear that the Vedas are within the Trigunas and you go beyond Trigunas to get liberation, moksha. So all these karmas are not meant for moksha. They are meant for karma and karma. In fact, the dharma artha, kama moksha, chaturvitha phala purusha thoughts are the objective in every karma, sanyavandra also. Why you are performing sanyavandra? Dharma artha, kama moksha, chaturvitha phala purusha siddhartham, samastha mangala vaptyartham. First, he starts with any karma, we will start with the identification of the cause. Why will anybody come to a doctor? If you don't have any health problem, if you are a yoga expert, you have attended our yoga course and you are practicing yoga, then you will never go to doctor. The fact that you went to a doctor shows there is a problem. Here also, Mama Upatha Durita Kshaya Dwara. Everybody has a problem. So first by solving the problem, that Durita, Mama Upatha already fallen on my head. That problem is already on my head. Janma Dukkham, Jara Dukkham, Jaya Dukkham, Punah Punah Samsaram, Sagaram Dukkham. So you have a, a number of problems, any number of problems. Sagaram Dukkham. There is nobody, if anybody in this audience has, is there who has no problem of any kind, please raise your hand. I will stop my lecture and I will ask him to give lecture. How he got that achievement. It's impossible to have anybody without any problem. Problems will be there always. So Mama Upadha Durita Kshaya Dwara. First I should overcome my problem. Not that uh, all problems will be overcome one shot. At the present, whatever problems are there, that will be. When I went to Ganga Pushkam in Kasi, I was performing a ritual that Prohit uh, was telling. By this uh, ritual today in Ganga Pushkaram, all your sins will be washed out till today. Doesn't mean tomorrow onwards you won't have. So whatever problems you have as of then we are trying to overcome because next minute another problem will come next day next hour something else will come 
So it's a continuous process. So Mama Upata Durita Kshedwara, Sri Paramishwara Muddhisya, Sri Paramishwara Pritchardam. And so on, you know the Sankalpam, I don't have to tell you, you're all experts in the Sankalpam, in Sanskrit. And so, the point I'm trying to drive is all the karmas are performed with the first objective of overcoming the existing problems and getting the welfare, shema, starting with the welfare, shema, sthairya, stability, vairya, courage, shema, sthairya, dhairya, abhaya, fearlessness, ayuhu. First, you have to be alive to do any of these things. Arogya, when you are alive, you should be healthy. Aishwarya, last comes Aishwarya. Unfortunately, today, people are putting Aishwarya first and forgetting all other things. There is no use. You have a lot of Aishwarya, a lot of money, a lot of properties, but you don't have health, or you are not alive, or you are not uh, having peace of mind, you don't have courage, you are uh, worried, you are afraid, you are collapsing. What is use? So these are more fundamental than the Aishwarya, the wealth. So by the Sankalpam is most important why I'm telling all this is Sankalpam is the most important part of any ritual, karma, Vedika, Shrauta, Smarta, Bauranika, Nitya, Naimitika, Kamya, or any purpose. The Sankalpam is the most important. That's why if you go to temples, when they are performing, say, Chandi Yagam, they will make you perform Sankalpam first, and then you all go and just watch. Because you don't perform the Yagam, somebody else will perform on your behalf. So everywhere in any ritual, the sankalpam is the most important. I told you why the sankalpam is very, very down to earth, practical, utilitarian objective. There is no great spiritual objective here. It is very down to earth, solving your problems. Because any problem, all kinds of problems people will have. So all possible problems are being samasta durita kshaya dwara. And then, of course, the particular karma, tanja vandanam, or Aishwaryam or Agniyotram or any other Homam or Havanam or Yagam or Yajnam, whatever it is, is being performed. And it will produce results. That's why people perform. Otherwise, nobody will perform. People are not forced to spend time and money. Huge amounts of money are involved. One Yajna like Pragati Resorts, it will cost uh, maybe 20 crores or 10 crores. And Pragati people are rich. Every day money rains from sky there. If you go there, you'll understand what I mean. So, all these are being performed. As I said, the Srauta Karmas are performed for the environment. So now let us come to understand how and why the environment can be purified or protected by the Srauta Karmas. So the basic idea is the Veda, all the mantras in the Veda contain three parameters. The Rishi, Chandas, and Dev. So, you take any mantra, Gayatri mantra, Vishwa. Vishwa, Mitra, Rishi, Savita, Devata. So, Chandas is Gayatri Chandas. Similarly, Anushtuk Chandas. Rati Chandas. These are the meters. Putpal Mala, Champak Mala, Kaik. So, the Rishi is not the author, but he is the deliverer. Rishayaha Mantra Drashtara. So, they visualize the mantra and they are delivering the mantra. They are only deliverers. So the maximum mantras in the Rig Veda are attributed to Bharadwaja. And I happen to belong to Bharadwaja Gautra. And of course we have Vamadeva, Agastya, so many uh, uh, Saptarishis. We have the topmost rishis, Angirasa, Bharadwaja, Vamadeva, Agastya, all these are the uh, top Saptarishis. There are hundreds of other Rishis. Not that they are less, but these are very prominent people. Their contribution to society is very huge. If you go to Kovur, you'll find the, all their statues on the Godavari bank, just like Tangman has all the statues. In Kovur, you have all their statues, Saptarishis. So that's why every lecture I start with Namo Brahmadibhyo Brahmavidya Samtadaya Kartrubhyo Vamsarishibhyo Mahadbhyo Namo Rupya. So these Saptarishis and other Rishis are our Gurus, they are our Vamsakartas. 
the brahmin caste is direct dna descendants of the rishis and other castes who also have the same rishi name like kashyapa for example brahmins also will be there and kshatriyas also will be there how is it possible because kshatriyas were the disciples of kashyapa rishi so like this disciples also were given the gotra and uh, genetic uh, lineage was maintained and uh, even non non brahmin rishis exist a large number of them the varmik himself was a hunter and uh, so it is not that only brahmins will be rishis so the uh, rishi chandas and devata so the crucial thing in re- research on the vedic knowledge is the concept of devata what is this devata normally if you ask any one of our uh, friends what is devata you will say devata means lakshmi devata saraswati devata or gayatri devata etc etc without knowing further they will think it is some kind of a who is saraswati it means saraswati is the statue is there in my school which are uh, wearing sari one lady is sitting with a book in the hand and veena veena pustaka dharini vad devi and so on so i wanted to ask those who give such an answer can i get the mobile number of saraswati can anybody in this audience top scholars are sitting in this audience can anybody give me the mobile number of saraswati or email address at least of course you may laugh but i won't laugh because saraswati is not a human being to have a mobile number and email address so devatas are not human beings so for sake of child or child like people like us the balas such human forms are kept in the temples or in schools or colleges or wherever they are not humans please remember this and they are not humans why you are keeping human form that is the root cause of the confusion and that is the root cause of confusion which the abrahamic religions have about hinduism thinking that hindus worship idols stones and they worship a large number of gods and goddesses 33 crores this is the confusion they have but it's not true it is not 33 crores it is 33 categories koti means category so we have the dwadash adityas ekadash rudras ashtavasus maruts and if you add all of them it becomes 33 that's why in the vishwarupa the lord has shown asya adityan vasun rudran shiro marutas tada so that is the 33 crore devatas but 40 devatas not crore and then there are many other devatas also bahuni adrishta purvani pasya ashcharyani varata so then arjuna says pasyami devan stava devadehe sarvan sarvan devan pasyami ಭೂತ ವಿಶೇಷ ಸಂಘಾನ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಾಂಡ ವೀಶಂ ಕಮಲಾಸನಸ್ತನ್ವಿಷಿಣ್ ಸರ್ವಾನ್ ದಿವ್ಯಾನ್ ಸೊ ಹಿ ಸಾ ಶಿವ ಹಿ ಸಾ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಹಿ ಸಾ ಎವ್ರಿಬಡಿ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಸೇಮ್ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ನಾರಾಯಣ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪರಮಾತ್ಮ ನಾವು ಎಸ್ಟರ್ಡೆ ಐ ವಾಸ್ ಲುಕಿಂಗ್ ಅಟ್ ದ ಲೈಫ್ ಹಿಸ್ಟ್ರಿ ಆಫ್ ದತ್ತಾತ್ರೇಯ ಸೊ Dattatraya showed his Vishwarupa to Parashram. Again, same Vishwarupa. He is everything. Then all these individual devatas are the subcomponents of the totality. The word Brahman means Brahat Vaad Brahman. That is total. And devata is individual. So in the diagram which I gave in the document, the inverted uh, pyramid, the uh, triangle, at the top is adhyatmika level which is totality om atma all the devata shaktis all the divine powers or natural powers are covered and within which at the bottom are the physical manifestations of the devatas and in the middle are the mantrik or daivi that is adhi daivika level of devatas so all devatas are having three levels ಆದಿಭಾವಧಿಗ ಆದಿದೇವಿಗಳ ಆಚಾರ ಆಲ್ ಆರ್ ಓಂಕಾರ ಮುಳ್ಳಿ ಫೈನಲಿ 
That's why if you look at any devata, <coughs> for example, if you take uh, Ganesh, we all worship Ganesh as the first. In fact, the word January comes from Janus. The word Janus in pagan religion was Ganesha because G and J are equivalent. So now, if you look at the Adharva Sirsha of uh, Ganesha Adharva Sirsha, it is clearly declared in the Adharva Veda that Ganesh himself is Parabrahma. Pameva Brahmasi, Prachaksham Brahmasi, Pameva Kartasi, Rattasi, Vartasi. Omkara. So if you look at Lalita Sasana, Shakti, again there, Parabrahma Swarupini. Mola Prakriti, Avyakta, Avyakta, Avyakta Swarupini. This one word is enough to understand the entire philosophy. Each of these Sahasranams are encyclopedias. Lalita Sahasranam is an encyclopedia. It covers everything. Each word is a big subject by itself. So Mola Prakriti, Avyakta, Avyakta, Avyakta Swarupini. What does it mean? Original nature, Mola Prakriti which is avyakta, unmanifest, and both vyakta, vyakta vyakta svaru. So if you look at the Bhagavad Gita, bhumi rapo analo vayu khammano buddhireva chahankara iti yamme vinah prakriti rashtadha. So the apara prakriti, apare anitas vanyam prakritim vidhime param yavabhutam mahavaho yayedam dharyate jagat. The para prakriti is the avyakta, and the apara prakriti comprising of bhumi, rapa, anala, vayu, kam, mara, vati, is the vyakta or the apara prakriti. Whose prakriti? My prakriti is it. Daivi, hesha, gunamayi, mama, maya, duratchaya, mamevaye, prapachyante, maya, metam, tarakte. So one single supreme being, you call him Narayana, you call him Krishna, you call him Vishnu, it doesn't matter. You can say Dattatreya, you can say Shiva, it doesn't matter. It is a Vishwarupa which is one and the same because it is totality of everything. Brahmam, Parabrahmam. Is that clear to all of you? The Adhyatmika level, that is the Omkaram, Parabrahm. So in that totality, we have individual windows which are called Devatas. Ichha Shakti, Kriya Shakti, Jnana Shakti. Jnana Shakti is Saraswati. Icha Shakti is Lakshmi. Kriya Shakti is Durga or Kali. So you can look at from any window. The same Parabrahma will be there. But all Devatas are within Parabrahma. In fact, the Lord says in the 11th chapter, you see Arjuna, everything in me, whatever else you want to see, you see that also. Whatever you have not seen, you see that also. So that means the totality the infinity, everything is covered in the Vishwarupam or Brahman Oka. That is Adhyatmika level. And the windows in within that are the Devatas. This is not understood easily by most of the people. They cannot. You ask any Hindu scholar, how come we, how come we have so many Devatas? Whereas the Parabrahm is only one. Saye kaha. Sa Brahma, Sa Shiva, Sa Hari, He say, Indra, So, Akshara, Paramas, Virat. Barely it is mentioned again and again and again. In the, both in the Vedadav Swaraproktaha, Vedante Chapratishthitaha. In the Upanishads as well, and in the Veda Samhita as well. Sa Prakriti Dinasya, Maheshwara. So, Prakriti Dina means Adhanarishwara. Shiva, Shakti, Shakti, Shiva. Shiva Shakta Yuktola Bhavati. Since Soundari Lahari is as if, if Shiva is there without Shakti, nothing will be there. It is unmanifest. So, Vagartha Viva Santrupta Vagartha Pratipate Jagatha Pitra Vande Parvati Parameshra. So, like word and meaning cannot be separated. Prakriti and Purusha cannot be separated. So, the Parvati and Parameshwara, that is Shiva and Shakti, cannot be separated. They are merged. And what comes out of that? The child is Ganesh. So that is why Omkaram. We start with Ganesh Devata. You take any other Devata. 
we have already discussed narayana then we have shiva if you look at the uh, shiva sahasranamam or shiva puranam it is very clearly brought out that shiva is parabrahma brahmanda vasita tohanyasam every clear it is clearly it is shiva is parabrahma in fact as shankaracharya came to his mother at the time of her death and he made her get the darshan of narayana and shiva both so she asked why you are showing me both then he told her both are the manifestations of parabrahman only shivaya vishnu roopaya shiva roopaya vishnave shivasya hrudayam vishnu vishnu sarvayam shiva and what about shakti just now we told mool of prakriti avyakta 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 swarup the manifest universe the manifest nature is shakti the unmanifest is shiva both are same without the unmanifest there cannot be manifest if the manifestation is not there then only avyakta 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 sarva prabhavanti aharagame ratriagame viliyante tatraiva avyakta sanya so in the srishti began the manifest universe is projected out of the unmanifest and at the end of srishti it goes back this is clearly stated in the eighth chapter of bhagavad gita therefore friends each of these devatas because from a to ma a i e u all this each one is a devata and their combinations are there like what is prana shakti prana shakti is also devata and prana shakti is a combination of vayu and agni without the combination of vayu and agni prana shakti will not be generated it is a combination if you look at uh, agni which is raka agni bijam is ra if you go on chanting ra 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 there will be heat generated in your body the agni astram contains ra related mantra vayu vyastram ya is the vayu bijam and every one of the bijakshras is a shakti by itself hayavaratna in panini is given at the end hayavaratna that is the sequence because we have seen in the upanishad asmad etasmad atman ha akash sambhuta ha akashad vayu vayo ragni agne rapa abja prithvi prithvya dana manad bhutani so from atman or pure self consciousness came first the surplused that is akasha that is ha akashad vayu ya vayo ragni ra and then agne rapa ha va and then abja prithvi la hayavara la that is sequence given by panini in the maheshwara at the end after giving all the ayun rudra kevanga yo chaya vatun yavana nam dhavan ganadas jabaganadas kavajata tava kapai sat sarhal so the entire creation entire nature as different different devatas which are nothing but different different forces different different components different different windows and the totality is parabrahman like surya navagrahas surya atma jagatasthastu sashya surya himself is surya narayana and along with surya come all other navagrahas the most important you know it has after surya is jupiter bhaspati so the monotheism polytheism pantheism integration is the truth which is there in the vedic culture this is not understood by muslims christians jews buddhists jains communists socialists even hindus don't understand this. when i discuss with any hindu they themselves will say how can you say uh brahman is only one when you have so many devas they don't understand what i told just now so it is not surprising that you didn't understand till now if you have understood today my job is done i am very happy so the when you perform upasana of any devata you are 
opening that particular window to the parabrahman please, please note this point that's why if you perform upasana of ganesh also you are performing upasana of parabrahman if you are performing upasana of lalita also you are performing parabrahman upasana if you are performing surya gayatri mantra is for surya and sanya mantra savita devata so through surya through gayatri tat savitururvareñam bhargo devasya dhimahi yo yo na prachodaya so surya is also parabrahman who is driving our Om Bhur, Om Bhuha, Om Swaha, Om Maha, Om Jana, Om Tapa, Om Satyam, Om Tat Savitur Varenyam Bhargo Devasya Dhimai, Dhyo Yona Prachodayat, Om Apo Jyoti Raso, Amrutam Brahma Bhut, Bhuva Suvar Om. This is the Saptavyahrati Gayatri Mantra. Normal Gayatri Mantra is shortcut. Om Bhur, Bhuva Suvar Om, Tat Savitur Varenyam Bhargo. Bhargo Devasya Dhimahi Dhyo Yona Prachodaya Aat. That's all. So for repetition, Japan, this short Gayatri Mantra version is adequate. But for top people, Rishis, they will perform the Saptavyahuti Gayatri Mantra Japan. I have one book called Gayatri Kalpam. I'll try to explain it some other day, which contains the interpretation of gayatri mantra in for 10 different perspectives and august uh, vasishtha vasishtha gives the yoga vasishtha type of parabrahma interpretation to the same gayatri mantra and uh, the pauranika perspective is there and the sanjavandana ordinary perspective is there as Surya. There is no difference between Parabrahman and Brahma. Both are same. Om. Basically, instead of confusing with words, you can say Om. Ovichek Aksham Brahma. The Mandukya Upanishad is very clear. We have studied. Now, the once you understood the Devatas and you understood that they are windows to the same Parabrahman or Om or then you will understand there is no difference between Bahudevata Upasana, Ekaiswar Upasana. And this is the core issue of conflict between the scholars of Abrahamic religions and Hindu scholars. Because ordinary people don't understand anyway. But what the scholars of Abrahamic religions don't understand is their concept of monotheism is defective, is not correct. Because they think monotheism means one God. Mono means one, thi means deva, distorted as thi. So they think that particular God is sitting in the chair, a big chair with a big beard in some seventh heaven or some such place. It is total, utter nonsense. They will have no idea what is Brahman or Parabrahman. And if you cannot understand Devatas, how can you understand Parabrahman? So they think Hindus are fools. They are worshipping many gods, whereas Brahman is only one. Now, this is a very interesting uh, musical composition by Annamacharya, Brahma Mokkatera, Parabrahma Mokkatera. Similarly, Antamatramuna Yavaru Dalachina, Antamatrame Nivu. In whatever quantum, Matra he said, in whatever quantum magnitude you can perceive or you can imagine or you can think, the Supreme Being is only that much. It is like a child will think uh, water is coming from only the tap in the house. Because the child has no idea from where the water is coming. So water is coming from the rain and ocean and all that he has no idea. Similarly, everybody thinks something. Only that he thinks. Kopasthavandukam concept. So uh, you know Kopasthavandukam story, right? The frogs in the well. 
the frog in the well thinks that well itself is the ocean well itself is everything the whole universe is the well it's he has no idea that there are bigger uh, water bodies so in same way <coughs> in fact in the bhagavad gita ayavan artho tapane sarvat samptodake ava sarveshu vedeshu brahmanasya vijana <coughs> in fact he has criticized lord krishna has criticized the people who perform upasana for small small desires like if you want water you can bring water in a small vessel or you can bring water in a big can or you can bring a water in a huge water tank or a lorry but still the ocean is much larger than all yavan thoda pane sarvatha samprito deke tava sarveshu vedeshu brahmanasya vijanata so a person who has got brahmajnan parim all the vedas and the rituals of the vedas are of no worth because he has reached the infinite source of everything whereas all these rituals are meant for small small sense so now the other issue is the now you understood the devata adi bhautika adi because the same devata can manifest in adi bhautika level adi daivika level and arjak same devata like narayana shiva shakti or ganesh or any other devata because there are hundreds of devatas in fact in the veda there are 800 devatas veda mantras which are prevailing today whatever was lost is lost so whatever is prevailing today 800 devatas are there. even plants are given as devatas in other veda krishna parni devata savita devata agni devata vayu devata prithvi devata prithvi suktam is there so the important point now most important point how veda means science and science means veda because if you take for example prithvi suktam bhu suktam you know in the pancha sukta bhu suktam is also so it explains all the structure contents functions operations within and by the earth and if you take vayu devata namaste vayu tvameva prachaksham brahmasi you know that vayu along with agni will produce prana life without without vayu there cannot be life without agni there cannot be life combination of these two no in all the vedic mantra if you go on counting the number of devatas you will find around eight so all these devatas again there are def- different categories of devatas which are grass subtle like if you take the grass devatas prithvi apa vayu all these are grass devatas and then subtle devatas means medha mai medha mai prajam i want medha medha shakti yam medham devagana pitrasyo vasate उपास and devas have performed upas yam medham devagana pitrasyo upaste taya mam adya today right now medhaya make me impregnated with that medha agne medha vinam kuru make me medavi so medha shakti who is saraswati cha shakti kriya shakti jnana shakti jnana shakti is medha shakti medha is a devata in the veda saraswati is a devata and we have uh, lakshmi sri suktam is on uh, sri sri svir me bhavatu alakshmir me nashyatu so how many lakshmi are there how many good things lakshmi means shobha you have the shobha of 
మనీ ఐశ్వర్యం శోభ ఆఫ్ విక్టరీ విజయలక్ష్మి ధనలక్ష్మి ధాన్యలక్ష్మి సంతాన లక్ష్మి సో దీస్ ఎయిట్ లక్ష్మి ఆర్ నాట్ హ్యూమన్ బీయింగ్స్ హూ వేర్ శారీస్ అండ్ సిట్ ఇన్ ఎ టెంపుల్ దేర్ బ్యూటీ రేస్ వెల్త్ ఆల్ గుడ్ థింగ్స్ ఇన్ లైఫ్ సరస్వతి ఈజ్ నాట్ a human being wearing a sari and holding a veena it is only a depiction we made for the sake of children who don't understand balanam bodhaya saraswati who is saraswati omkara panjara suki she is a parrot encaged in one single cage called om that means all knowledge is in om omkara panjara suki upanishad udyana kele kalakanthi she is a coel singing ku 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 like that in a garden called upanishads upanishad udyana kele kalakanthi agama vipina mayuri she is a mayuri peacock dancing in a forest called vedas vedas are vast forest the knowledge which is beautifully dancing like a peacock in the veda forest is saraswati arya mantar vibhave she lives in the hearts of the aryas laudashi appear desika roopena darshadaya she appears as a teacher every teacher is a manifestation of saraswati because knowledge is being delivered through the teacher for what purpose abhyudayam for the progress of the student who is listening and then there is a personification description vamakucha vihita veena vaani sangeeta matruka vande veena is the knowledge of the music and book is the knowledge of the bookish knowledge and the mala is the knowledge of the japa knowledge so all these are kept as symbols of knowledge today you can add one laptop or you can add internet etc there is nothing wrong in fact in the vargan saraswati temple there is a board written there ya yeah, that power which is varna shabda gadya padya mantra roopatmika ta sa mama dikhve kshipram rasatu sarvada that is shloka written there that power who is manifesting herself or itself as alphabets words paragraphs prose poetry and uh, mantras and so on may that power reside in my tongue immediately always so vag devyai namah to the mola mantra of saraswati is vada vada vag vadini swaha in the saraswati sahasram stotram is there saraswati suktam is there in rigved it has two meanings one is the river saraswati and other is knowledge saraswati knowledge is also flowing like river now i have already explained lakshmi saraswati now kali the action kriya shakti you may have lot of knowledge you may have lot of pleasures and wealth and all great things in life but you are totally inactive then that no use so that action power priya shakti is durga or kali so we need all the three all the three are required for srishti sthiti layam the brahma vishnu mahesh so they have the consorts for all the three consort they are not human beings who married in a marriage hall in second row and it's not like that it is the power for the sake of creation you need jnana shakti in fact the saraswati sahasram stotram it is mentioned clearly that when brahma made the creation all the creation was inert and dead jada so he didn't know what to do so he started performing tapasya then saraswati appeared to him that means information knowledge action that is saraswati i am saraswati you perform my upasana and she gave him the saraswati sahasramas and he performed upasana for a large time period then the universe became activated information flow knowledge activity and all that has happened this is clearly mentioned in the saraswati sahasranam stotram 
So I have already explained to you Vishnu, Shiva, Shakti, and Gadapati. And then Surya also I have explained to you. Then we also have Kartikeya. These are the six major deities established by Shankaracharya as the Shanmatas Thapanacharya Titanic God. He established six so-called religions. Shanmatas. All are again windows to Parabrahma. Please note that point. So because this Abrahamic religious scholars do not understand this, there is a world crisis of wars. So in this paper, which I have submitted to you and which was submitted in the Rigveda conference, when I presented it, there were top scholars in the audience, 46 top scholars in the whole globe then, from every mutt, from every country. I asked them, is it correct or not? An integrated framework for science and Veda. He said, yes, that is correct. They all said that. No objections raised. I asked them, if you have any objections, you tell me now. They could not give any objections. And one of the top scholars who sat there is Korada Subramaniangar, who is from the Central University here. So also there are scholars from Aravind Ashram and Kanchimat and so on and so forth. So, friends, so this integrated framework for science and Veda is my own contribution of research, which I presented you as a paper, as a chapter in my total book of nine chapters. As the basic framework of Dharma Yoga, I gave the title Dharma Yoga from the context of sustainability environment. Dharma is a set of sustainability principles. Dharma does not mean religion. In Hindi, it means religion. But in Sanskrit, it means dharmaha, that which holds. So the set of sustainability principles is called dharma. And by propitiating, by strengthening, nourishing the devatas, by replenishing them through the yajna or through any other processes, we will be assuring the sustainability of the environment and we will be assuring sustainability of human life, social sustainability, civilizational sustainability, without which the environment will be destroyed thanks to the distorted scientific technological perception. Again, this scientific technological distortion of defining science as a method, as a process of exploiting nature for the maximum pleasure and comfort of human beings, this definition given by Bacon in around 17th, 18th century is the root cause of today's environmental crisis. And that has its grounds in the confused monotheism of Bible. There the biblical God or Quranic God has nothing to do with the nature. He is separate somewhere. That's why they keep on saying, don't worship the creation, worship the creator. As if creator and creation have nothing to do with each other. That's the biggest foolishness. And by doing that wrong interpretation of Parabrahman, they have landed up in a scientific perspective which is defective and which has resulted in the environmental crisis of global threat of survivability of the human civilization today. So how much impact the lack of understanding has, see that. What was happening there, I tell you what happened. Originally, all Arabic countries or even European countries were all Hindu. They were following Sanat and Dharma. They were performing Yajnas, Yagas originally. The Jews themselves in Israel were also Hindus originally. In fact, even today, a lot of people say Jews are Hindus. In fact, there is a theory that Jews are nothing but the Yadavas who were resettled there by Arjuna at the, at the time of immersion of Dwarka. Now, what these fellows did, they also had all gods and goddesses. So around 6th century BC, there were two priests in their temple in Jerusalem. And they were given an order by the Persian emperor. Because Persian empire was having Israel as its part of the colonization. 
they were given the order by Parishan Emperor that Supreme being is only one. And they call it Ahura Vazda. Those Parishans, they have their book called Zen Davest. Zen means Chand, that means Veda. <clears throat> Zen Davest is a mirror image of Rigveda. There S becomes H and H becomes S. That's why Himalayas becomes Himalayas. Sindh becomes Hind. Sapta Sindhu is the region. But Sindhu is called Hindu in, in their language. Old Persian, Zen, West language, Western language. There I have myself seen with my own eyes the Gayatri Mantra mentioned. The expression of Parabrahman can be made by Om as one symbol, O Vitya, Ekaksharam Brahma. And the next level of expansion is Gayatri. Tat Savitur Varenyam Bhakto Deva Siddhi Mahidhyo Yoha Prachodana. So the Gayatri Mantra is translated in the Zoroastrian holy text called Zendavast, and I have seen with my own eyes. I have friends, Parsis. That Persian emperor told these fellows, Are why Parabrahman is only one, the Gayatri Mantra is here. This is. So these fellows, instead of understanding what I told you in this lecture today, they gave a name Yahweh, which means I exist. In fact, Yahweh was one of the gods they had earlier, god of war, like Rudra. So they elevated that Yahweh is the only god and all other gods are dumped into dustbin. So that is the monotheism of Judaism. In the Christianity, that Yahweh is converted to Yehovah, who does all kinds of crazy things in the Bible. He will come and fight uh, wrestling matches and have children with, uh, sleeping with women. Is it possible? Then, in Christianity, in New Testament, this uh, Jesus is introduced as the divinity. By, by whom? By Constantine. Constantine gave an order in 324 AD, Council of Crimea. He conducted two big meetings, Council of Crimea and Council of Nicaea in Europe. Nicaea means nice. That is the name of the city. It is there even today in France. So he declared an order that from today onward, Jesus will be the replacement for son. They all worship son. He himself worship son. He died as a son worshiper. That means he died as a Hindu. Mitraism it is called. He gave an order that Jesus will replace son. That's how Sunday became the holy day for Christians. And all the entire Europe was converted into Jesus worshiper. And Jesus is a fake uh, person. He didn't ever exist it is a fakely created by Paul. So that is how the entire religion was born out of a lie. And coming to Islam, they have understood this mischief of Jesus' business. So they said, no, no, Jesus ko bajura ko. He's okay, he's there. He's Isa. Isa is one of the 1,24,000 prophets. That's the end of it. So go back to the Judaism concept of Yahweh and call it Allah. But they don't use the word Yahweh again here. They want to use the word Allah because the word Allah was used for Bhagavan, Supreme Being in Arabic thousands of years before Islam was created. And which was again used in the context of the Vedas. There are Arabic poetry using the word Allah for Supreme Being, Paramatma, Parameshwara and referring to Rukveda, Ajurveda, Samveda and Hindustan as a holy place. These poems are there. 20 poems are there, out of which two are inscribed on the walls of Birla Mandir in Delhi. I saw it myself. So this is not known. What I told today is not known to anybody. Therefore, they will create a world war, say any number of world wars, they will convert everybody, they will kill everybody. So when you worship any devata, you are ultimately worshipping Param Brahman, Paramatma, Ishvara, Bhagavan, Devudu, all one and the same. That's why Lord Krishna says, Ye yathamam prapatyante, tam stadheva gajamyaham, amavartmanu vartante, manushya partha sarvasha. Ye pyanya devata bhaktat, whosoever performs upas of any devata, he is indirectly worshipping me only. Sarva deva namaskara kesavam pratiyacha. So this if it is understood, there will be world peace. So this Dharma Yoga framework, 
which I've given in my paper and chapter, I've explained to you. So I'll stop now. And this is the essence of the Vedas. Of course, we'll continue more deeper delving tomorrow and after. So now I'll open it for questions. Okay, Dhanyavadam Lendi. Uh, thank you for the lecture today. Uh, anybody wants to ask any question, raise your hands digitally. Or first we'll see what are the messages in the chat box. Uh, Sisi Babagar, can you just go through? Yeah, uh, yeah no, sir. Uh, most of the questions have been uh, seen by Prabhugaru as he was doing the lecture and he has answered. What is the difference between Bhagavantudu and Devudu and uh, Brahman and Parabrahman? Most of the questions he has answered. There is one uh, long question uh, by Suresh Kumar Neti. Uh, I think it's better he himself uh, okay. asks this question. Okay, okay. Uh, I'll just unmute you, Suresh. Can you raise your hand? Okay, let me search for you then. Suresh Kumar Niti. Suresh. Ah, yeah. I got it. Yeah, he has come. He has raised his hand. Yeah, he is unmuted. Okay, speak. Suresh Garo. Why you are not being able to speak? Mr. Suresh, you can unmute and talk. He has you have a question, you can raise the question. Okay, meanwhile, meanwhile, I'll answer another question which came up. What are the Shanmatas? Shiva and all the avatars of Shiva, Shiva Panchayatnam, all that. Vishnu, all the avatars of Vishnu, Vishnu Panchayatnam, etc. Rama Panchayatnam, etc. Et and then Shakti. Shakti means uh, all forms of Shakti. Nav Navadurgas or Ashadasi Durgas and uh, Saraswati, Lakshmi, all, all put together, Shakti. And fourth is Ganesha, you know, the Ashtavinayakas and all that. Then fifth is Kartikeya, that is Subramanya. And sixth is Surya. Surya includes Navagrahas. Okay, that is the answer to that question which just came up. Who are the Shanmatas? Which are the Shanmatas? Devatas of Shanmatas. All are finally merging into the top into Parabrahma. That inverted tri that triangle which I gave, Inverted pyramid, that is the sum and substance. Yes, uh, what was the, you, why don't you read out? I think he's not unmuting his, uh, right? you read out his question. Uh, can you hear me, sir, now? Yeah, yeah, I can. Okay, now Skaram, sir. Uh, good morning. So this is basically uh, a set of questions that I was having. You were mentioning about the uh, Kamya Karmas, uh, which are performed with uh, some specific uh, uh, object to in mind or outcome in mind. Uh, uh, so again, obviously they are there in uh, our uh, Sastras and uh, Vedas. So my only question was, can we, uh, uh, is it okay to actually have that specific goal and start performing something? Like it is like you're, you're wanting something specific. Instead, is it not better to just maybe do puja and hope that you get what you are supposed to instead of saying that, oh, okay, I need long life, so I want to do this and then... Uh... If you really believe in that uh, approach which you mentioned, why are you asking me this story? You could have just listened and kept quiet and say, okay, <laughs> I did some right side. No, I mean, if, if, if it is really okay, I mean, if it's okay, I can start asking. No, 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 if it no, is no, not no, okay, then I will no, not no, ask. No, no, no. You, are, you are asking because you have a desire. You have a strong desire. You cannot stop your uh, desire to ask. Am I right? You could have just kept quiet. Ma kendugu, ma kendugu, ma anta macha, anta maya, bhagavan tulu nadu, anta taipa ini, question nadu indu. The answer is what I indu. Ante apudu, okwele adigadu okay, anan kunte nein gula adigadu mal bedta na, anti kani. Kamme karman da ve. Kamme karman da ve. Upur, e class bedta indu ko, nein lecture wal na desire indu ko, nein desirelessness and chaptu, and jay Krishna Murthy garu, 
లెక్చరిచ్చేవాడు టూ అండ్ హాఫ్ అవర్స్ లెక్చరిచ్చేవాడు ఇట్లా పద్మాసన్ మీద కూర్చు కదలకుండా ఇచ్చేవాడు ఇంగ్లీష్ ప్లీజ్ జయ కృష్ణమూర్తి యూస్ టు గివ్ ఏ లెక్చర్ ఫర్ టూ అండ్ హాఫ్ అవర్స్ without moving on padmasana and then he will say what is the need of yoga so it is like that you know without a desire nothing can happen even the creation will not happen yeah the kama yata in fact when supreme being created the universe he desired it first so sankalpam <laughs> everything is based on desire సర్వస్య కామాయ సర్వం ప్రియం భవతి ఆత్మనస్సు కామాయ సర్వం ప్రియం భవతి ఈవెన్ ఇది బ్రదర్ అండ్ ఉపనిషత్ యాజ్ఞవల్క్యాసెస్ ఎవ్రీథింగ్ ఈస్ బేస్డ్ ఆన్ డిజైర్ వితౌట్ డిజైర్ దేర్ ఇస్ నో యాక్షన్ సో కామ్య కర్మ ఈస్ ఇండెఫినెట్ అండౌటెడ్లీ ఆల్వేస్ విల్ బి దేర్ నో బడి ఈస్ ఇంట్రెస్టెడ్ ఇన్ గాడ్ ప్లీజ్ నోట్ దిస్ అండర్లైన్ all those who go to tirupati they are not interested in balaji venkatesh swami they are interested in their desires you ask anybody i ask many people in the queue they all came for desire fulfillment on day so anybody will do anything only based on it nothing will be done without a cause and that cause is a desire so yeah. sankalpam is the same as desire you are um, yeah. it's big it's a sankalpam is a large big okay. desire all okay. desires put into it in yeah. fact the only one which is biggest prayer is chamakam mm-hmm. in the chamakam i want this i want that cham chame mayas chame anukamas chame kamas chame saumanas chame vittan chame vittis chame bhutan chame bhutis chame tushame prasus chame susha chame sudiran chame finally today i should have a good so and so on it goes on there is this mega prayer is the chamakam nothing is left out no stretch of imagination can ask for anything more than the chamakam asks Hmm. Okay. So everything so the, is based on Sankalpam. In fact, today you are asking me this question because you had this Sankalpam long back and I am giving this lecture because I had this Sankalpam long back. And we are all, our entire life is nothing but fulfilling our Sankalpam, our desires. Uh, right, sir. So, second question. Sir, I have uh, two or three other uh, points. Uh, one I is, thought you were desireless. I thought you were desireless. <laughs> <laughs> no sir no no i i i have desires but i was only not sure whether it is okay to express the desires or uh, suppress them and no. hope that they will get uh, fulfilled no, at no, some honesty, point honesty honesty is the best part honesty yeah. is the yeah go ahead. yeah so the, the, you were mentioning about uh, rushis and uh, sakhas and all that so obviously all of us belong to different uh, sakhas i think in pravaras we tell them is it through our rushis that we know which veda we belong to like krishna yajur veda or uh, no no, no 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 how how do we get to know us? i mean because even sandhya vandanam has separate no, 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 rishi, rishi, rishi is much higher level I okay mean, okay shakha will be assigned by the guru or uh, teacher or parent so okay. what uh, what the what veda vyasa has performed is he has divided the vedas into four parts yeah originally ananta veda the, the, the in fact vedas are the repository of knowledge is a vast knowledge uh, repository which he divided into four parts and taught to four of his students pila jaimani vaishampayana and sumanta four vedas he taught to four disciples okay so those people taught to their disciples a disciple includes their own children those veda veda shakhas uh, are the vedic schools and sub schools sub, sub shakhas so yeah. that is how all the four vedas the entire brahmin race is created and sustained and maintained only for the protection and promotion and propagation prachar prasar of veda the word brahma itself means brahmam janati ti brahmana the word brahma means para brahma as well as veda it has two meanings so he, uh, brahma brahma jnanam means veda jnanam as well as brahma jnan because veda talks of brahma only so the, the purpose of brahmana is learning vedas patanam patanam yajanam yajanam and dhanam 
taking dana and giving. So these uh, uh, divisions and subdivisions of shakas are made by the acharyas, starting from Veda Vyasa's direct disciples, Paila, Jaimini, Vaishampayana, and so on. Okay. Okay. Hello. Sir, we are also uh, now talking about uh, Vedas, which have actually been, the knowledge of Vedas has been acquired by uh, Rushis when they are probably in a, a, a specific state of mind and maybe Samadhi, meditation, Samadhi, 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 Samadhi state. Not only they have acquired the knowledge of the Vedas in Samadhi, even today, if you really want to have a full grasp of the Veda, you have to go into Samadhi. That's what my Guru Sivaranda Varthi told. Yes, sir. Otherwise, so that, you will not get the meaning understood. Correct, sir. So that was the question that I was asking. So is it possible that even today someone gets into Samadhi state and actually get that same knowledge of Vedas? Because we are saying that not all Vedas are available now because maybe some of them have been lost when it is passed on from one generation to other. So why is it not possible that someone, get, I mean, it's not easy, obviously, but can someone, in theory at least, get into Samadhi and then... Yes, yes. Not, only the, whole. not only the uh, Vedas, but all the Akashic records will be there. Not only yeah. about this, about anything and everything. Yeah. Akashic records will be there. The vibrations can be tapped. The knowledge can be tapped by the Samadhi yogis. Those in Samadhi. So is it the same state as Turiyam? Can we say that? Uh... Yeah, Turiya is one, one definition, but Yoga Shastra has given detailed explanations of Samadhi. We have already covered and we will cover it. Okay, sir. Okay. Okay. Thank uh, you so much. There is one question. Yes. We have stories on birth of many uh, Devatas, Aditi and uh, Diti, etc. What about Mahavishnu, Maheshwara and Lalita? The birth no, I already this. told you. No, I already told you in the Shanmatas, Mahavishnu, Narayana is first or Shiva. So their avatars, their various manifestations given in their respective Puranas, they are all covered in that. So similarly, Shakti Devi Bhagavatam is there, and we have Navadurgas and Ashtadasuda, Bhuja Durga, and all that. You know the uh, various. Uh, uh, Durga related or Kali related uh, descriptions are all covered under Shakti Devata. So they are big, big uh, uh, say, uh, religions or sub religions. So if you go to Bengal, it's all Shaktaya. Or if you go to um, uh, Maharashtra, it will be all Ganapatyam. If you go to Tamil Nadu, it will be Kartikeyam. Of course, Shiva and Vishnu and Shakti are universal. What is the question? Have you understood? Or is there anything more? That, that's the only question. I mean. <laughs> oh, any other uh, question? Yeah. Sir, uh, only Brahmins belong to four Veda Parampara. What about other people who belong? No, no, no. To... It, is, it is not true. Uh, the Chaturvanyam Maya Sishtam Gunakarma Vibhaga Shaha. So based on the Gunas, that is Sattva Guna, Rajoguna, Tamoguna, and the Karma. Karma is Visarga, Karma Sanjitaha, which means by birth also and by uh, aptitude also, by uh, action also. The combination of all this is Karma. So based on the Karma and the Guna, the Chaturvanyams are created. All are important. The one is superior, one is inferior. It's not like that. It is only the, uh, the Vedic teachers, the teaching profession is given assigned to brahmanas but abrahmanas are also allowed in very rare exceptional circumstances like vishwamitra vishwamitra was a kshatriya but he became a brahmarishi after a huge amount of penance so the, the chaturvarnyam is valid is a genetic engineering type of dna based division and the vedas were taught to all but the teachers are usually Brahmins. Usually, not necessarily, but usually. Like Matanga Maharshi is not a Brahmin. Valmiki is not a Brahmin. They are the very great personalities. Very, very great personalities. So now the point is that it is not necessary to be a Brahmin 
to get moksha or to get Vedic knowledge, because in the Veda Patshalas, Veda Gurukulas, Vedas were taught to all the three Savarnas, Brahma, Nakshatriya, Vaishya. Even Krishna learned Vedas, Rama learned Vedas. Krishna and Sudama simultaneously learned Vedas from the same teacher in Sandipani Ashramam, which I visited. I couldn't meet Krishna, his table is still there. So Sudama was a Brahmin, Krishna was not a Brahmin. So the point is, Vedas are taught not only to Brahmins, but the teachers are usually Brahmins because they have to be fully dedicated whole life only for Vedas. And as far as the Shudras are concerned, they are the economic activity classes, agriculture, metallurgy, or uh, blacksmith, tinsmith, goldsmith, so many hundred odd economic castes without whom there is no activity, no society's survival possible. They were left out from the Vedic teaching because they have no time or interest or aptitude to learn Vedas. But the sum and substance of philosophy or the knowledge of the Vedas was delivered through Puranas to those who could not learn Vedas. But among the Sutras also, the very great personalities like Sutta, Romaharshana, who delivered all the Puranas, he is a Sutra by himself. He is a Sutta, he was a driver. So, that is not a restriction because those who cannot dedicate their whole life only for Vedic teaching and learning, they cannot become teachers. And such the, the uh, race itself, the, the entire family lineage was dedicated to Vedas for the Brahmins only. Of course, now, since the British times, all Brahmins have abandoned Vedas and they are doing all other things. Okay, next I question. Think, uh, I, I have a personal uh, question on this uh, desire and uh, sankalpam. Uh, my understanding is that uh, a desire comes first and then to achieve that desire or whatever it is, we take a sankalpam to do something and then fulfill our desire. Is that fine? So there's a difference between these two? No, no. See, the word sankalpam has got uh, different interpretations. Like in the Bhagavad Gita, in the sixth chapter, he has said, sankalpa prabhavan kaman. He said, desires are being born out of sankalpas. Uh -huh. <laughs> what okay. he means is the thoughts. What he means is thoughts. Right. But the, he doesn't mean the word sankalpa in the way we mean, okay, uh, Brahmin Prohit will say, sit down, sankalpa jip, sankalpa jip, not in that sense. So inside the mind, sankalpa prabhavan kaman, like that he has said. So the desire comes out of your thought process, which is called sankalpa in Bhagavad Gita, but in the rituals, the word sankalpa is a big statement, a declaration right. that I am so and so, my wife and my son and my daughter and my daughter in law and my granddaughter, all these people should be happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. I think now Saugandhi, I think uh, Babu Garu, you can take over. Okay, thank you, Chala Chitti Babu Garu. Now, uh, if there are no other questions, so Saugandhi, Saugandhi, is Saugandhi is there. Yeah, Saugandhi. Ah, I think I have done. Okay. And Anand Kane, what is You can unmute and talk. We are running short of time. Saugandhi. I try to unmute her, but. Uh, ah. no, yeah. Okay, Namaste. Uh, the question is for the Trimurtis and for Lalita, we don't have a um, story of their origin. Like for everybody else, we have like Krishna was born to so and so, we Rama was born. Oh, Avatars, no, no, no. you have. Well, they, they were born as humans, but Lalita is not a human. Lalita okay. Devi is created by the Devi, Devatas by putting all their Shaktis into her to destroy that particular Asura. Oh, okay. if, you, if you look at the uh, that uh, Devi Saptashati. Okay. Yes. That okay. Is explained. Okay. But what okay, about uh, Shiva? Are and, uh, no, no, please. You are getting confused between Avtaras and Devas. Okay. Shiva, Vishnu, and Mahesh. Shiva is not. Uh, Shiva is not a. 
Shiva is not human. Yeah, but he is always existent, right? From there is no story of his origin. Like for everybody no, no, else, he, all the supreme beings have no but. Yo, yo, mama, jam anadim chaveti sarva bhuta maheshwaram ajam anadi. No birth and no beginning. Okay. So, okay. The, only okay. the avatars have human forms, human lives. Okay. Okay. Thank There is one question uh, uh, regarding this uh, Brahmins and Shudras and all. The, the question is, uh, so can we say that the Savarnas studied in Veda universities while Shudra studied in vocational diploma schools. Uh, similar system is present in the present uh, lab. Yeah, I, actually, the education system was having multi tier structure. So the universities were there Nalanda University, Takshasila University, Vikramsila University, and so on and so forth. That is one tier of that is higher education. People who went there came from abroad, from China, from Europe, and from everywhere. And the education was imparted in Sanskrit language in all subjects. The word university means all subjects, universal. That is one high, higher education level. They are like IIT universities. Now, the next level is Gurukulas. So, where the Gurukulas are there? Even today, they are there. So many Gurukulas are there. In Shrungeli, there is one Gurukulam. And here in Madhipadu, there is one Gurukulam. So many Gurukulams and where the Patshalas are there, which are smaller. And every Brahmin uh, Vedic scholar who has learned from his own father or from teacher, we can teach to his students in his own house also. Small, small groups. Where the Patshalas and Vedic personal training centers are also there. Like Sandipani, Mm -hmm. I had an ashram in Ujjain. It is still there. If you want, you can go there and see it. We cannot join because Sandipani is, uh, is no more. It's a tourist spot in Ujjain. So, Sudama went, Krishna went, everybody went, and Rama went to Vasishtha to learn everything, A to Z. So, the education still was going on, and in every village, the teachers were teaching. Vidhi Badi was also there. So the vocation training was automatically from his own parents, not from outside. You understand what I'm saying? His own parents will teach the vocational training because the equipment is already there. Training since birth is being trained. So that way the caste system is good uh, for the economy because there are two reasons. Employment is guaranteed for all Baby is born immediately, guaranteed whole life employment is guaranteed. Not like today, for 30 years you will be studying and you don't know what you are going to be after 30 years. It's not like that. It is guaranteed, a good plan, well prepared right in the time of birth. Second advantage is that all skills and professions and services, professional services are available to all members of the society. Supposing uh, there is a person in the village. He, he wants a particular service. He wants, uh, say, delivery, child delivery service. Then it, it is readily available. The barber's wife is the child deliverer. And surgeons, barbers are surgeons. And our metallurgy or, you know, blacksmith, goldsmith, tinsmith, uh, all services are readily available, almost free of cost. Only bartering of grains was being done. So it was an equitable distribution of wealth in terms of grains. And all services are almost freely available, which is not possible in a modern society. You have to pay heavily, that too in Western society. If, uh, when I was living in America, if I had to cut my hair, I was cutting my own hair because if I go to get my hair cut in the mall, there will be a posh uh, shop, which is run by a person who got a degree certificate in cutting hair from the local university, <laughs> and he charged $250 for cutting my hair. <laughs> so similarly, if you want to stitch your clothes, there are no tailors in America. Only machines are there, and they stitch all your clothes. If you really want a person to stitch your clothes, he would have had a diploma degree in stitching clothes, and he would put a big showroom in mall, and he would charge you $500 to stitch a pant or shirt. 
So this kind of thing is there. And similarly, every profession, carpenter, blacksmith, everything, like goldsmith, it is impossible for anybody to make those ornaments except a child born in a goldsmith's family. He is trained right from childhood. It's very difficult task. So that these are the positive points of caste system. And not as usual, as I told you, the uh, polytheism, pantheism, monotheism is misunderstood. And the uh, multiple devtas and parabrahma, omkaram, one, one among many and many among many is misunderstood. And similarly, the caste system is also misunderstood and misinterpreted and therefore it was being destroyed. So everybody will become a government employee, they want to become, everybody wants reservations, everybody wants to get a white collar job. Who will perform agriculture? Who will perform uh, all other professions? So now the story is sometimes getting reversed. The plumbers are the highest paid people in the Western countries, not doctors and engineers. So today you want to become rich, you become a plumber, then you'll get uh, no more money in a Western country. Or similarly, dentists, are richer. Psychiatrists are richer because there are so many problems. Demand is. So it is a misunderstood intervention and damage to the social structure given in the Shastras and Vedas, which has resulted in the current day situation. Next. Uh, what is the difference between Gurukulam and Vedapata Sala? So Gurukulam is a bigger one. Gurukulam. Kulam, Kulapati. It is like a vast institute. Well, the parts are a smaller one. There are only 100 people will be there. Well, in Gurukulam, there will be 5,000 people. I think there are no questions for that. Okay. Uh, Babu Garu, you can take over. Okay. One more question is, politicians and administrators, are they Kshatriyas? Correct. Public administration, warfare, and defense, it is all Kshatriya Dharma. The main definition of a Kshatriya is you should not run away in a war. Yuddheshu Apalayanam. Manu has defined clearly. Yuddheshu <laughs> All others, if you go to the war, they'll come running back because they'll be killed. Only a true Kshatriya will fight. Either he will kill and defeat or he will be killed. He's ready to lay down his life. Are we able to do it? Can others do it? No. That is the definition of a Kshatriya. The Rajputs were like this. And even our uh, Sikhs and all, they are all Kshatriyas. But by birth also they are Kshatriyas. Okay. Uh, now we'll close. Anantanji? Uh, can you chant Prathana? Unmute. You have unmuted, but uh, okay. Yeah, you keep talking, uh, Anantanji. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Tasti Prajabya Paripal Hayantam, Nyaye Namargena Mahimahisha, Go Bram Hanebe Shubha was to Nityam, Loka Samasta Sukino Bhavantu. Kale Varshatu Pajanyaha, Pruti Visa Shalinim, Dejo Yam Shobare Hitaha, Bram Hana Santu Nirbaya, Aputran Putrina Santu Putrina Santu Potrinaha, Adana Sadana Santu Jeevan to Sharadam Shatam, Om Sarve Bhavantu Sukinaha, Sarve Santu Niramaya, Sarve Bhadrani Pashantu, Makas Chedduka Bhag Bavet Om Asatoma Sadgamaya Tamasoma Jotir Gamaya Rutyorma Amrutangamaya Om Shante 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 Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamuda Chate Purnasya Purnamada Yapurname Vavasishate Om Shante 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 Hari Om Shri Guru Bhyona Maha Hari Om Sarvibhyaha Namaskar Haan, Dhaniwa Dhanandi Anantan Gadu
now uh, let us uh, recite vande matra sorry national anthem can you mana all of you please stand up and sing along with the chanda chitti babu garu Janagana mana adhinamayaka jayahe bharat bhagya vidhata Punjab Sindhu Gujarat Maratha Dravida Utkala Banga Vindhya Himachala Yamuna Ganga Utshala Jaladhita Ranga Tava Shubhana Me Jage Tava Shubha Ashish Mange Gahe Tava Jaya Gatha Janagana Mangala Dayaka Jayahe Bharata Bhagya Vidata Jayahe 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 Jaya 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 Jayahe 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 Jayahe